discussing today the remaining articles of the thermodynamics that I have already written on the board. The first one is that limitations of the first law of thermodynamics. The second one, second law of thermodynamics. Kelvin Planck statement of second law of thermodynamics. Clausius statement of second law of thermodynamics. Heat engine, heat engine cycle and PV diagram. Okay, so we will start our first article that is limitations of first law that I have already written on the board. Let us see similarly. What we have learned in the first law? Remind you all. Remind you of memory. And first law suggests that first law consult with the law of conservation of energy. Isn't it? That means energy can neither be created nor destroyed or it gives the heat work relation okay heat is converted into work or work is converted into heat that means the energy is conserved that all things we have learned in first law of thermodynamics isn't it dear students but what is the limitation here this law gives the theoretical statement but the most important point is that whether it is possible or not, practically, this law can't explain this. This law can, can't explain, cannot explain. This law cannot verify whether it is possible or not. That is the first limitation. The law of conservation of energy that is suggested that is given in the first law. But whether it is possible, whether it is correct or not correct. So such an explanation is not given by the first law of thermodynamics. This is the first limitation. The second limitation is that we have already know that the heat is a part of energy, is a form of energy. In that heat always flows from higher point temperature to lower point temperature. Obviously, it is a spontaneous process. But can it be possible to transfer heat from low body temperature, low temperature body to high temperature body? Is it possible or not? And if possible, then how it is, how it is experimentally proved? So such a type of explanation is not given by the first law of thermodynamics. Okay. Another third limitation that we have learned. Heat is converted into work, isn't it? Or work is converted into heat. Okay. But is it, possi is it possible that all heat is completely converted into entire work? Or all work is completely converted into entire heat? Is it possible? Mind well, dear student, I will write most important sentence that is the heart of the thermodynamics that is like this. All work is completely converted into heat. First law of thermodynamics. This is the another statement. 
during the study of thermodynamics dear student the most important sentence according to me this is the heart of the thermodynamics mind well see here i will repeat again all work is completely converted into heat no doubt so suppose this is work that i have done like this rubbing the hands with each other this is the work and then my palms get heated that is the conversion of work into heat but in reverse case the heat cannot be completely converted into work then how it is possible that is suggested by the second law of thermodynamics so the creation of the second law of thermodynamics is due to the such a limitations already remain in the first law of thermodynamics okay so as long as the heat engine is concerned that we want to learn in the next article that work is completely converted into heat but all heat is not completely converted into work so this statement is not satisfactorily explained practically explained by the first law of thermodynamics so these are the some limitations regarding refrigerator this is also one type of heat engine so this is the reverse process of the working of the heat engine that refrigerator you do know do you know refrigerator that refrigerator is already available in our house so in that what happens the heat is transferred from cold temperature body to high temperature body is it possible to transfer it spontaneously no for that purpose some work is to be done on the gas then and then only it is possible but such a type of things that are not explained by the first law of thermodynamics so these are the some limitations remain in the first law of thermodynamics and so that i think the creation of the second law of thermodynamics at the end so then we will discuss in short now what are the limitations dear student number 1 first law of thermodynamics concerned with conservation of energy okay what is mean by conservation that energy can neither be created nor destroyed but it can be converted from one form to another form heat is converted into work or work is converted into heat no no so this is all about theoretical explanation which is given by the first law of thermodynamics but whether it is successfully possible or not so this explanation is not given by first law so this is the first limitation the second limitation that i have already written on the board so it is most important thing regarding the heat engine what is second limitation that i have already written see here all work is completely converted into heat i have given example by the means palms of the hands and that work is converted into heat but all heat is not completely converted into work so this phenomenon is not explained by the first law of thermodynamics isn't it have you understood this so another most important thing is that regarding refrigerator that i have also told you what is that thing refri the working of refrigerator is the reverse process of heat engine that we want to learn in the next article so to maintain the temperature colder and colder inside the environment of the freeze or refrigerator we have to transfer heat from colder region to hotter region so we have to extract the heat from colder region and so that that region become more cold and cold is it possible spontaneously no it is not possible spontaneously it is not a natural process so we have to we have to apply some work we have to produce some work we have to give some work on the system not by the system that is not explained by the first law of thermodynamics another thing that naturally heat transfer from higher form temperature to lower form temperature but how it is possible can it be possible from 
lower point temperature to higher point temperature. So that all explanations, all verifications that we have to do is not given by the first law of thermodynamics and these are the limitations of first law of thermodynamics dear students. Okay, then we will go, we will approach to the second law of thermodynamics. Let us, let me clean the board at first and I will give a title like this, second law of thermodynamics. Second law of thermodynamics. So you might 
remember this segment or you may write out the next segment that is not given in the book dear student the segment of again i will repeat it that all work is converted from all work is completely converted into heat but 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 what all heat is not completely converted into work that is the most important sentence that that sentence is i think heart of the thermodynamics so this is the statement and i am making use of this statement we have to learn kelvin kelvin plant statement of second law of thermodynamics clausius statement of second law of thermodynamics isn't it the second law of thermodynamics is concerned with the engine working of engine that engine may be heat engine that engine may be refrigerator that engine may be heat pump that engine may be air cooler these are all different types of engines and that all engines are work by making use of the principle of what second law of thermodynamics is it clear then what is the statement kelvin plant statement so he has made some block diagram in that statement so let me draw the uh, free energy diagram of kelvin plant statement of second law of thermodynamics so this statement of second law of thermodynamics it is also called as engine law it is also called as engine law so by learning the statement of second law of thermodynamics now we have to learn kelvin plant statement of second law of thermodynamics so let us draw the diagram of kelvin plant statement of second law of thermodynamics i will write the statement i will write the article on the board see here kelvin plant statement
it is impossible to extract heat it is supposed to reach from the hot reservoir which will all be used to do external work because this is not possible because some part of heat having temperature tc that is qc which is exhausted which is exhausted from the output of the output of heat engine towards the cold reservoir so this much this much is most uh, necessary part regarding kelvin plant statement of second law of thermodynamics so this kelvin plant statement is not so critical it is again a second law you can write the same statement but by making use of by making use of this law diagram we can explain that second law by making use of this law diagram hot reservoir hot reservoir is nothing but the source of heat from which we get source from which sorry from which we get heat q qh having very high temperature and that heat is utilized in two parts that all heat is not converted into work that we want to explain with the help of this block diagram and that is nothing but the kelvin plant statement of second law of thermodynamics it is also called as first form of second law of thermodynamics kelvin plant statement is also called as first form of second law of thermodynamics okay then we will go we will complete limitations we will complete second law of thermodynamics we have also complete kelvin plant statement of second law of thermodynamics and now we have to learn now clausius statement of second law of thermodynamics see here i will write on the board clausius statement of second law of thermodynamics now clausius statement Statement. 
work is done by the system. This is the most important difference between these two cells. So we will draw block diagram at first. And from the block diagram, we will stretch Clausius statement. The Clausius statement is the most important statement as long as the construction and working of refrigerator heat pump, air conditioner. So let me draw the diagram of Kelvin plant statement. The diagram is again similar. The diagram is like this, having some slight difference. What is this? This is hot reservoir. Having temperature pH. What is this gas balloon? What is this? Yes, this is cold reservoir. Having temperature what? Tc. The heat transfer is Qc. Okay. The direction of the work is like this. See here. See here. This is what? See here. This is what? QC. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I always should be in the upper direction like this. So this is the difference between block diagram of Kelvin plant statement and process statement. See here. The compartment of work is on the right side. But here now, we have student, the compartment of work is on left side. The direction of the arrow is away from the system. But direction of the work is towards the system. See here. And the transport of heat is from cold reservoir to hot reservoir. So this is possible if and only if by creating some work on the system. So, heat is transferred from lower temperature body to higher temperature body by creating some work on the system. And this Clausius statement of second law is also called as second form of second law of thermodynamics. Isn't it? And the application of this Clausius statement of second law is nothing but that I have already told you. What is that application? That application is the refrigerator that we have already used in our home. Another one, AC, air conditioner, heat pump. In all the things, this Clausius statement of second law of thermodynamics is to be used. And this is the general idea. In this, work is done on the system. The direction of the work is inward. But in case of Kelvin plant and Kelvin plant statement, the work is done by the system and the arrow of the work is outward. So this is the most important difference between these two. And we should memorize these two statements by making comparative study between these two. The first important thing is that in Kelvin plant statement, the flow of heat is from higher temperature to lower temperature. And work is done by the system. Okay. Here, and the heat, the transfer of heat from higher point temperature to lower point temperature is spontaneously. That is the also most important thing. Naturally, the heat always flows from higher point temperature to lower point temperature. And at that time, work is done by the system over the engine to get mechanical work, that's all. But here, in second statement, that is the, which is useful to construct the refrigerator, heat flows from lower point temperature to higher point temperature, yes to that. I will repeat again and again. again. But the transfer of heat is from lower point temperature to higher point temperature. It is naturally, is it naturally possible? Is it spontaneous?
said yes. No, it is not spontaneous. By forcing it, we have to prepare, we have to create some work on the system, not by the system. We have to create work on the system and by making use of that work, that helper, that work is helper to move, to transfer heat from cold reservoir to hot reservoir. That means whatever heat, whatever low temperature heat remains in the cold reservoir, that is also absorbed and moved towards hot reservoir. And so that the backward side of the refrigerator will be warm. And the surrounding region of the refrigerator becomes more cool and cool because the transfer of it is from low point temperature, low temperature point to high temperature point. And work is done on the system. Okay, so this is all about, I will repeat again, that is the limitations of first law of thermodynamics that we learn. Then we learn the statement of second law of thermodynamics. Actually, the statement given in the book is, I think, somewhat complicated. And so that I have written the statement, that I have written the alternative statement up on the board so that I have explained, I will refer again that statement. What is that statement? All work is completely converted into heat. Word, word. But all heat is not completely converted into entropy. And so that whatever engine, whatever machines we prepare by making use of heat, consulting with heat, having no 100% efficiency up till now, we don't get 100% efficient engine because that all heat, all heat given to the system is not completely converted into entire work. That is the most important thing that is the law of universe. And the from that we can learn Kelvin Clark statement, Clausius statement. This is regarding with the second law that we have explained by drawing the block diagram. And now the most important part that we want to learn is heat engine. Actually, the heat engine, this article is given at first than second law of thermodynamics. But I have taken second law of thermodynamics at first, then Clausius statement, Kelvin Planck statement earlier than heat engine because now we can understand heat engine more. Okay? So let me clean the board, dear student. See us. Heat engine. That heat engine may be of any motorcycle, that heat engine may be of any car, or that heat engine may be of any machine having the again same part like this, hot reservoir. We can say that the temperature of the high hot reservoir is pH, which is maximum and constant high temperature. Then see here. I will draw one arrow like this. QH. What is QH? Amount of heat taken from the hot reservoir. That is QH. H stands for hot reservoir. This H also stands for hot reservoir, isn't it? So diagram, let me complete like this. The diagram is like this, dear student. See here. Again we draw the diagram like this. Work is done on the right hand side direction like this. So this is W. Then here what happens? This arrow goes to the cold reservoir like this. Having heat to C and the temperature is P C C like this. Then question I 
is very heat engine here. So heat engine is here suppose like this.
no need to explain no need to write any other sentence more complicated sentence we have to make this more simple and simple so this is the function of working substance not shown in the figure which is present inside the heat engine then cylinder cylinder is the main working part of the heat engine cylinder like this see here let me watch the board here actually what happens like this this is a cylinder like this having massless massless frictionless piston consisting of some gas inside the cylinder so this much part is present in the heat engine as soon as some heat is given to the ideal gas then internal energy of the gas increases here and sorry the diagram should be i have drawn previous the diagram should be like this
Efficiency is denoted by theta. Efficiency is denoted by theta. And it is a ratio of work done to the sorry work done to the heat supply. What is W? Work work done by the working substance. Work done by the system. Work done by the heat engine. Whatever it may be. That is what. And how much heat is supplied provided towards the heat engine? The supplied heat is QH. So QH is the heat taken from the hot reservoir by the working substance. So it is a ratio of work done by the working substance to the amount of heat absorbed by the working substance. So this is the formula of efficiency. Okay? If we put the value of W here, then we can write eta is equal to Qh minus Qc upon Qh. We have to learn. See here. I have only put the value of W. W. I have put here. W is equal to Qh minus Qc upon Qh. And by making use of simple mathematics that we have learned in fifth and sixth standard, that is what? Separating the LCM here, we can write it what? See here. 1 minus Qc upon Qh. So this is the formula of eta. This is the formula of eta. From that eta, we can suggest the efficiency of what engine. How much efficient our heat engine is? I have already told during the whole lecture that efficiency of the heat engine is not 100% yes See here. Efficiency of the Engine is in terms of percentage by multiplying it by 100% like this. But it is not 100%. Or efficiency is not 1. It will be 1 if and only if. See here. QC. What is QC? QC what? See here. What is QC? QC is the heat exhausted by the output of hot engine. Heat engine towards the cold reservoir. If this QC is equal to 0, what happens? That means no heat is exhausted by the output of the heat engine. All amount of heat is converted into work now. At that time, if this QC becomes 0, then this factor becomes 0 and efficiency will get is 1. Efficiency of that particular heat engine is 1 or we can say that Efficiency of that particular heat engine is 100% by multiplying it by 1, by multiplying it by 100% to the 1. So efficiency is 100% if and only if QC will be equal to 0. But up till now, it is not possible and you have to make it possible in future. And I will make, I will put this problem for you in future. You can be prepared, dear student, heat engine which has efficiency 1 or 100%. But up till now, such a type of heat engine is not prepared yet. Efficiency of the heat engine is less than 1 always or efficiency of the heat engine is less than 100%. So this is all about construction and working of heat engine. And again I will remind you that this heat engine works on the wage statement. First law of thermodynamics or second law of thermodynamics? Second law of thermodynamics obviously. First law of thermodynamics is only the theory. It is only a theoretical statement. And second law of thermodynamics is nothing but the practical statement. Whatever suggested in the first law, that is verified whether it is possible or not. That is done by the second law of thermodynamics and by 
writing in log second log two dynamics, the working and construction of heat engine is prepared. I think, dear students, this is so much one article is remaining today. That article is what heat engine cycle and pressure volume diagram that we will take on tomorrow. So again, be careful, attend the lecture on tomorrow also. And the most important thing that physics make it simple together with you by listening, by observing and by enjoying this video lecture. Be positive, be alert, be sad, be enjoy by learning the physics more joyfully by taking without any tension. Always remain tensionless, always remain free. So, thank you very much all of you and we will meet again on tomorrow by taking the article. What is our article on tomorrow? That article is what? Heat engine cycle. It is a cyclic process. How the working is actually done? How this 